Hi folks, we got a good show for you tonight. We're at JMB Tackle. We're going to teach you a little bit about slow pitch jigging. Okay, so uh, get the kids who want to learn. Get some popcorn, maybe a soda, maybe a beer. Sit back, get your uh, notepad, and uh, hopefully you're going to learn a little bit tonight. Okay, from JMB Tackle, I'm Captain Greg DeBruel with CJ Adams and our special guest Kyle Doughton. Go ahead, take it away, CJ. Hi guys, uh, slow pitch jigging. I know not many of you guys are familiar with it. We, as well, it's new to the East Coast. Um, we're gonna go over a couple of things on slow pitch jigging. Tell them where it came from. Slow pitch jigging originated, I believe, in Japan. It, uh, in it Japan. Then, it then moved to the West Coast, became very, very popular, and now is becoming very, very popular on the East Coast. So. As it grows on the East Coast, we get a little more accustomed to it, and they make rods for it, they make jigs for it. We will show you guys quite a few jigs, rods, uh, that are productive way to slow pitch jigging. Before I say that, that being said, this is your standard diamond jig, okay? Everybody's got them in their tackle box, everybody uses them, everybody's seen them. Diamond jigging, you drop it to the bottom, let it hit, Flip the bale and reel up six, eight, ten turns. Let it back down, reel up six, eight, ten turns. That's your standard diamond jigging. We see it all the time on our boat, your boat. We're, we're seeing this. more and more of these. This is what you use for slow pitch. Okay, now these are colorful jigs and, and we're seeing That's, a lot. You can see the difference, we're, obviously. We're seeing a lot more of these on the boat. And, and they certainly catch, but the majority of people really don't know how to use them. Okay, this is a, a different technique all to itself, and, and that's what we're going to explain here. Like CJ said, it started, it started over in Japan, it came to the West Coast, and, and now for how many years, Kyle? A couple, well, three it's, years? It's getting more it's popular, popular all the time. Like New Jersey, New York is much more popular than here, yep. and now it's starting to move up into this area. The, the beauty part about it, you can catch a lot of different fish with this, okay? So we're going to... Uh, we're going to turn this over to Kyle here for a minute. Go ahead and explain a little bit about it. So, had... if you have questions, we say this all the time. This, what we're going to tell you tonight, these are our opinions. We've been doing it for a good number of years. Uh, it might not go along with everybody. If you have questions, comments, you can either call in, call our telephone number. Uh, Heather is there to answer them, or you can text us. Okay, but uh, we're here to help you. That said... So you've got your diamond jig that everybody talked about, and this is a very economical way, and it's very, very productive. But then targeting sea bass, things like that, you want to do something more colorful, you want to move the jig a little bit more. This is a Zakana jig by Daiwa, and there's a bunch of jigs similar to this on the market. It's not a slow pitch jig, but you can use it on a very light rod, drop it to the bottom, and jig it, you know, rapidly right near the bottom. And you're going to catch sea bass, you're going to catch a bunch of different things on it. You'll notice it has more angles and it's cut a little bit different than a traditional diamond jig. As you evolve through the jig, there's this one here, which we didn't take out of the package, which is a Shimano butterfly jig and it's designed to speed jig. And when you speed jig, you're going to take a rod and reel and you're going to move the rod rapidly up and reel at the same time. And it's like walking the dog with a lure on the surface. So you get the, the lure to dart through the water column, and because the, the jig has angles on it, it's going to dart farther and do more erratic action. Some of these jigs, Kyle, they move up to six feet, correct? Right. Well, if you, and, if, if, if you see a pile of bait, okay, just to, just to give right. an example, because that's what it's representing. If, if, if you have a pile of bait, and if you notice, if you watch this, if you're on top of it, you'll see one of the bait fish dart outside of it, Okay, and it gets wounded or whatever. Right. It, it tries to get back inside. That's what these jigs are, are, are representing. And that's the e erratic flutter that they have. You can see how this one, I don't know if you can actually see it, but you, you can see how, it, how, it's, uh, how it's cut and everything. And just imagine that thing. I mean, this thing's going to move. This is not your, your, your average diamond jig. But what okay. Kyle said, there's a technique to make it move. You can't That's just, you the know, thing. Just drop this That's to the bottom the technique. and stand there and just jig it there. You've got to snap it, it, right? Correct. Right. So that when we get to actual slow pitch jigging, which is the Japanese style of moving the jig, and, and you'll catch as much on the fall as on the retrieve, and you're actually going to pitch. He means with, that... He, let's explain yeah. that the fall of the jig, jig. so as, as the jig as the jig, as the jig falls down 
you're going to get as many hits as, as it's going down right. as you will going back up again. Back up again. And a pitch is considered a raise of the rod and like a half or quarter turn or even a full turn of the reel. And that's going to... After you jig it, correct? After, after you, you jig, jig it. Because the jig, the motion of the jig, you want to jig it up and you're going to flick it t towards the end so that the line gets just a little bit of slack in it. And that's what's going to allow the jig to cradle that's and, what change, here. and change direction. And that's what gives you this movement that may be six, eight feet apart, but all near the bottom. Slow pitch. So it's not speed. You're not, we're, we were talking about Florida. So we had a wreck on the bottom. You and I were talking about yep. it. And you're coming up through the water column. You've got all these species Let's, that you can get. Yeah. Sh just show it over here. You have the wreck on the bottom, okay? And there'll be a certain species of fish on the wreck. And then up 30 feet, there's another species of fish. And then up 20 feet from that, there's going to be another species of fish. And this type of fishing here, done properly, you can, you can go through this whole water column and catch a variety of fish. That's the right. beauty part about it. But then, you know? if you wanted to do this around us, we basically only have that bottom. bottom. So we don't want to work it up through the water column. We want to pitch and maybe take a quarter turn. And when you're pitching you'll watch guys that are good at it, they may go boom, boom, and then pitch it, you know, like up the last little bit, yep. so that they're getting that jig to move a little bit differently. It's, it, and everybody has a little different action. Now, when slow pitch came to this area, just like on cereal boxes where everything says heart healthy, and you, and the question is, it, what is heart healthy? What is it? So slow pitch, because we're in the United States marketing, they put slow pitch on everything. On everything. Everything. So this rod that I have in my hand is a true slow pitch rod. And the, the, pr the price range of these can vary, the, correct? Can vary. And that's a lot of times what... So this is a Tsunami, what would be considered a slow pitch rod. Now they do make a true slow pitch rod. But this one is a much faster taper. And if CJ, if we can get it in the thing, yep. you can grab that. You can see it's not coming. It's stopping out here. You know, so it, everybody can see that, Randy. Yeah. So it's look how much pressure. pressure. You know what? Pressure. There's a lot of pressure on that, but this is where it's all happening, happening. right here. Right now, now, if we take this rod, which is more of a true slow pitch rod, and you put about the same amount of pressure. Yes, it's lighter in the tip, but now keep going, keep bending. Look and, at that. And it's all right there. The There's, that's a lot of pressure, I mean, folks. Randy, show them how far this thing's bent. Yeah. I mean, look, you can see but the this pressure. Is, this is where the backbone of the rod is, right here. Here, and I have very little pressure on my body, and I'm able to reel with the reel being a winch. So this has all been an evolution of tackle that has brought this upon, because... We could we, show them, just we, for demonstration, show them the standard bend of a rod that everybody's accustomed to. This is just your regular rod, and it bends like everybody sees. This is what we see a lot of. Right. So Actually, we're demonstrating... This, one's, this, this, yeah, one, okay, this one's even better, show yeah. them that. Here's your here's your standard fishing so, rod. Right. And and now I have a lot of pressure. Put it like as much pressure. I got a lot more pressure in my forearm and I can feel it here on my back. Where before I had it right up under my arm and he had more pressure and I wasn't feeling anything. <clears throat> and it allows you to catch bigger fish, different fish with real light gear. You don't need a rod to set the hook. So that's another thing with the jig is because this jig is erratic through the water. The fish hit it aggressively. Um, and do they make all sorts of different kinds of slow pitch jigs, or is there is a ton? Okay. And that's so. I know personally. I these out. So these are like the packages that they come in, and you'll see the back of the package has an action on it, and then this one has a real erratic action. That's the one that Greg was showing you with the cup in it, and then this is another one showing the fall and the, the retrieve. So these jigs, each one is cut on different angles and they all do different things. So you can have an arsenal of jigs and, and go back and forth and target different things and, and each one might work with a little different action on the rod. Like we're talking about a pitch is a raise, a flick, and a reel. But how you do that in the movement is gonna move that jig different. Tell, tell them because, because we see this on the boat. There is, there is a, it sounds easy. Raise the rod. No, right. A, a, there's a technique to doing it. Definitely. Okay. And, and when you see someone who's good at it, they will make an amateur, which I would consider myself, 
I mean, I've done a lot of research because we myself sell this stuff. as well. I've never. It, yeah. But when you put I'm not up a, against I'm not somebody, a, I'm not an amateur. No, you're not an amateur at anything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you can do it with a spinning reel, but a lot of it's done with conventional. And I pulled out a whole bunch of different reels because we were talking you know, about how this is evolved. I, I just want to say something about the about the rod. You know, you you uh, the more sophisticated the rod, right? Unfortunately, the more expensive it's going to be. That's all there is to it. I mean, this here, the amount of pressure, like you said, it's just it's just tremendous. I mean, I, I know I'm showing you, but you have to. You have to understand, I'm putting a lot of pressure on that, but I, it's, it's I'm not feeling you. it's nothing on me. It's the rods taking that up. But to achieve that in a rod, they have to wrap this on the mandrel when they're making this blank, and it's a combination of a, of a, a lot, lot of things. It's, it's, it's fibers going in different ways. Different, different, different ways they lay it on there to achieve that, okay? Yeah. It's not just a regular piece of fiberglass. So right. it's... And you know, glass is very soft, where this is different carbon fibers and graphites all done in different layers. Different and, and, and give different you, diagonals to, to, right. to attain that, to get that rod to do that. And everybody you know? likes terms, so they call it nanotechnology. That's what everybody uses as a coined as a term. Now, at different price points... What is it called, CJ? Nanotechnology. Boy. See? You know, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> you're, you know, you're hitting it out of the park. I gotta say something. You're, you're uh, hitting it out of the park tonight. Myself, I gotta say, park. myself... Um, Matt, who runs the Blackhawk, you know Matt, obviously. Uh, Jeff I, Ross, our I buddy, and uh, even your brother Evan. We uh, we've actually been doing this a little bit, and before this all came about, we used to call it conkling. Uh, that's just a, a term <laughs> a term we came up with. Um, but we would go. What is it called? Conkling, 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 conkling. Me, Jeff, uh, Matt, and Evan. We uh, did you? Did we you came up with this term. Conkling. That over some beers at Black Island. No, we something? just we were out uh, fishing, and we just decided to come up with that word, but. Little did we know, it's similar to slow pitch. Uh, I guess you could say we do personally a little bit of it. Whether us ourselves are doing the right technique, we I don't know. Caught tuna fish we on have caught tuna fish on this type of stuff. We have caught tuna fish on this type of stuff, <laughs> no problem. I mean, 150 pound fish, you reel them right to the boat some days. They get a little angry when they get to the boat, but you know. That's... Like I said, we, we see more and more of this on the boat, but the, the technique of doing it properly, we, we don't see as much. We you see got two hooks. Yeah. We see a lot of them, and we also see a lot of guys lose them um, because. And when they lose them, what do they do? Well, they're ex they're a little more expensive than they're your standard expensive. jig, and we see a lot of guys lose them because they're not doing the proper technique, like Kyle was showing. Why do they tell them why? It. Tell them why they have two hooks on it. So they have multiple hooks, and a lot of them will have a head hook, and then some of them will have a tail hook and a head hook, and the reason is for that action. When you look on the package it's going to be different how the fish is going to hit it. A lot of times when it's going sideways, a fish is coming in like this and you're going to, it, his jaw is actually going to slide down and get caught like that. They're usually very sharp hooks and then the, the size of the, um, the little leader on the hook makes a difference because you don't want it to get caught on the jig all on the, the time. On the jig. But can you see that? I guess you can. We'll give you a close up. There you go. But you don't need like to Kyle said, the some, sometimes they're they're up on the the head of the jig up here too. But I mean, this thing's going to go. You know, your standard diamond jig, like we said, you put it down there, wind it up. This is not going to do that. This is going to go all over the place. Right. You know? And and it, it's like on a head boat like yours, where you go on a spot and and target one species. It's going to be somewhat popular. But for somebody in their own boat, where they can go a day without any bait and they can go from spot to spot and target all these different fish with just a jig. And I think it's fun because there's nothing like having the rod and reel in your hand, moving the jig, and having that fish aggressively hit it. I mean, it's just different than holding it and waiting for the bite. You're moving that jig, and when that fish hits it, he's aggressive, and it, it really is a lot more fun. I think yeah. it is. Let's, uh, let's just, I know we get a lot of questions for the viewers right now. Let's just discuss on what a setup like this might cost as far as the low end to the high end because we get those questions all the time uh, and I know this stuff probably isn't the least expensive. Is that, so the reel that you guys talked about in one of your early sure, videos, yeah. the Daiwa Seagate, yeah. would be a good introductory reel. Okay. You want a reel that has a large gear case because that's when that fulcrum point comes back near the grip, you're essentially using the reel as the winch because you're no longer picking and reeling down. 
Normally with a regular traditional rod, you're gonna pick up with the rod and then you're gonna reel down. With this, the rod is already bent and that fish has all that pressure of that rod that he's bent over and you're wearing him out with that rod being bent like that. But you yourself, you don't have any ability really to pick up. So you're just gonna sit here and you're gonna reel. So you want something that's a fairly good retrieve with a big gear case. That's the diver seat. We've been over that right, right. reel before. Uh -huh. So this would be a good introductory reel and you couple it with an introductory slow pitch rod, which may be a tsunami, not the one we showed because that's kind of an Americanized slow pitch. Okay. It's, it's not really a true. If you wanted to go into a true slow pitch, you'd be looking what tsunami makes. They call it a slim wave and it's a white rod. Very, very parabolic, which is, you know, kind of defines that slow pitch rod. That's a, a, what, a slim it's wave? Slim wave. Slim wave. Right. Um, and then after that, you've got, so that's like. Now, what does something like that range from as far as a slim wave and a reel? 150 and 75 to 100 dollars, okay. that type of thing. So, roughly 250 dollars, you can get a start out, start which out. is nice. Yep. And then you can go up at. Like say a fifth, another fifty dollars is going to get you a better reel. Okay. And it's really not doing anything for the slow pitch. All right. It's just giving you a reel that's not graphite. It's aluminum. It's machined, more ball bearings, things like that. But it's not adding to the ability to to slow pitch. To to really change the ability, you have to um, go to a much more expensive reel, where you've got something that auto engages. Now that's so, the O'Shea Jigger. That's what's, that, this what's, is like the top, top end. What's more, you, what's more important, the, uh, the rod or the reel at, at, at this point? The rod, it, the rod for the action to truly slow pitch. I would say the rod is probably one of the most important because you, yep. it, you need to match it with the jigs. And that's where if you're, if you're a true guy, you know, a, a purist for this type of sport per se, then you're going to be technically specific and you're going to have multiple rods for the different jigs that you're going to use. Yeah. Um, but it's like, like myself, we're new to this stuff. The, we have a lot of jigging right. rods, uh, me and the guys we fish with. I know Jeff's watching, Evan's watching, Matt's watching, they saw. Uh, I, did me I, I did mention Conkling, guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we, we do myself. We have a lot of these, these higher end fancy rods, um, but we don't have the quantity of rods where you could change we just change out the jig and put it on the same rod right so you're J &B, saying they make J and V doesn't know it yet but they're gonna they're gonna give us one of these to try when we get the right customer on board and we you know gotta have the right it. one <laughs> yeah we gotta have so, the right customer so what you're saying is there's certain rods for certain jigs is that what how about this one yeah. folks is this okay. one okay so as Dude, like bend that again because i get excited every time you get excited over this i mean well that's really something well, you I don't mean, get excited about a lot of things then do you it's very I short i don't can you, can you fight like a fish a little bit? Yeah, wow. <laughs> you, don't get a, you don't get excited this is the one, a lot. This is the one we'll take. Okay. Uh, the auto-engage reels, you were saying, is best for, or is it just so a like recommendation? The, when, when you get to the higher end, you're going to go to a reel like this, where when you drop it to the bottom, and then you crank on it, it's auto-engaging. It also generally has a larger handle, to give you more power for what we were talking about. Okay. You're using this as a winch. The gearing in it, it, just to justify some of the expense, when people go, would you cut it out? He's trying to talk. What? No, he's screw what? with things. He's excited. It's I know. Pink reel. <laughs> I think. He hasn't seen a pink reel before. <laughs> this is what you ought to get. <laughs> and Thanks. I'll put it in a gift bag for you. <laughs> um, you, when you're doing it with this reel, you don't realize why they spend so much money on this and it's the little things from that reel to this reel how it's put together how big the gear is and then they start with what angle they cut the gears and what the gears are made out of to make it easy and effortless to put to catch a big fish I, on a I small I can reel. say for myself um, as far as when I started out fishing uh, using such a, a reel as far as a Seagate when I was just introdu introduced to it now I own some stuff like that and to be honest with you I personally can't go back to something like that. I, once you use this stuff, uh, the quality of it, it's jacked right up. And you know, we 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 tell this to people every trip. I, I mean, we get the guy that goes to Walmart and gets the spinning rod. I know they want to catch them. They want to catch them. If you just got the right tackle, do it you, once. You, you don't have to spend four or five hundred dollars. Yeah. Nope. But you get the right tackle, and you you're going to catch more fish, and you're going to be happier doing it. You know, right. that's all and, there's to And the it, big know? thing is to talk to somebody that, that's going to sell you the right stuff.
because we have it all the time where people come in here after they've bought stuff because they didn't know what they were doing and it's just not the right gear for what you're doing. Rods and reels, if someone comes into me and they're, they're new into it, I try to sell them at a moderate price point, most generic to be able to do a lot of different things. But then as you progress through it, it's what do you want to be more specific about sure. and that's where you put your money. Yep. And, and we're talking about when you get to this stuff, this is ultra specific. Mm -hmm. You just bought a rod and reel to do maybe one thing with and, and you spend a lot of money to do it. Well, it's like my, it's like my golf clubs. Very simple. I spend a lot of money to, to hit it as far as I can, and it, I, I, I don't hit it as far as I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I try. <laughs> but hopefully, at least it uh, goes straight. Yeah. Yeah, um, it goes straight. What else can we tell them? I don't, I don't know. know. This is like we were just like we were talking about. This is fairly new to the East Coast. About how many years? You said it's popular in Jersey. Yeah. Uh, but. But slow pitch, like I was trying to explain to guys, the term slow pitch is misused in the United States okay. a lot. So slow pitch terminology has been in, in this area for probably four or five years where, you know, actively. But only within the last year or two have the, has the cons customer base been ready for the true slow pitch stuff. Slow pitch. And you'll see companies like Shimano, Daiwa, Japanese companies, they do this with a lot of their stuff. They know that the U.S. is not ready for this technical type fishing. We tend to be more tool oriented. I've gone through this before with them. We like our fishing stuff to be a tool where in Japan it's an art form and it's, it's, it's fun, it's different, things I've, like that. I've fished on the long range boats out of San Diego. Yep. And you want to talk about the difference of the fishermen. Them guys in San Diego, they're going to come with three or four different rods all top of the line and even even when they're picking out the bait the anchovies they want the certain size bait that's not i mean they got it down with science and they and they've got this down well, i'll tell yeah. you they're very very good at it I, and you know and they've realized that they can not have to use a lot of that live bait on those long range trips by getting these jigs to work that well yeah um and i know you know it's a totally different customer than a lot of <laughs> yours but the kayak guys absolutely love these because they can do so much with it when they only have one or two rods to choose from and they don't want bait, they don't want to have to keep going in and out of a tackle box. They have a couple jigs ready to go on like two rods and they can catch everything. Now what is what is a jig like this or what uh, Greg's holding? What's what's the price range on these? I mean, I know they're a little more expensive than your standard diamond jig. Uh, so they're rough, like... Uh, this anywhere, one says $16.99. So they're, so they're... Anywhere from probably 8 to $16. $8 so, $16. you know, so now you're getting Nomad coming into the U.S. Any of the Shimano, Daiwa, they're great, but they're also going to be a premium because they brought them in first, you know, and so they had the marketing and everything else to go along with it. When you see some of the other jigs come onto the market, but then there's some that are Japanese slow pitch jigs that are high end, okay. that are, you know, $20, $30 for a jig. But that's not, sure. I, I don't think it makes sense for us around here as much for sea bass, fluke, things like that. Okay, we have a question. Uh, All right. Andrew Ortiz, for narrow slow pitch reels, are you still adding mono backing to the spool? Or is it only braid with electric tape to prevent slipping and maximize line capacity? Do you still use backing, so to say, as far as we do on most reels uh, when you put braid on? So uh, he's talking about the ultra narrow reels yep. and line capacity is an issue, but it's, it's more going to be species dependent. So if I was using these in Florida or I was going to go tuna fishing with, so just to give you an example, I set up one of these reels. It was actually this one here with 50 pound test braid. And that's a, a narrow, is that a narrow spool? Narrow spool, okay. 50 pound test braid on a slow pitch rod, heavier than these. And my dad on the charter boat, was catching those bluefin where you mm -hmm. were, yep. you know, 150, 175 pound bluefin on this. Yep. So for that, we went right to the spool. Okay. But for sea bass on a, on a small rod like this, if you're fishing in New England, it's kind of a waste of money. You know, I'd put 200 yards on it, some backing underneath it. So I guess, Andrew, to answer your question, if you're fishing deep, deep water to maximize line Big capacity, fish. yes. Big um, fish, the size of the fish. It's, it's, for a narrow to, spool. You have to gear it to what you're, to what you're catching. I mean, yeah, what thing, you're targeting. You would limit what your you're backing, targeting. so to say. Uh, and if you're fishing up here and up to 100 feet of water for sea bass, you could, you could put backing on it, you know. 
I hope that answers your question. Do we have any other questions? It's been kind of quiet. Yeah, it's been a little quiet tonight. Not too many questions. I saw Jake asked a question, but we don't have to answer that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Jake ignoring bone. Jake. You want to know if we've ever used a whalebone? You ever used a whalebone? You got to thanks for the answer. I so found that's a good. whale bone once. Jake, you found a whalebone. <laughs> I, I got a whale vertebrae. You know, in fact, we pulled up half the whale, but. Oh. These things are something else. Look at the way it's I, I know it's heel on it. I know it's hard to to show that to the people, but you're right. There's the there's the keel. Maybe you can get a close up on it. Can you see that? Yeah, you go. And that yeah. is called a flat fall jig, and that is that has a great cradling action when it falls through the water. So it actually hesitates and stays in the strike zone. Good stuff. Different. Definitely. I mean, we're talking. You know, we're talking. Uh, you know grad school diamond jigging here i mean for the average right. for the average guy that's using a, a, a diamond jig and yeah. fishing or bass fishing it's a little bit different but what? this is a this is a couple of grades up from that but what, it's what i was hoping to accomplish effective. by having you guys come here and talk about this was the guy that buys this jig and puts it on the rod that you talked about in the beginning for regular means, diamond jigging regular diamond jigging and he doesn't see the value in it well, that's because you're not really doing it with the right, the proper setup. Okay. And, but you also don't need this to catch the fish. Yeah. It's it's do you want to have a little bit more fun, lighter gear, lighter line, and be working this jig more, get that reaction strike. So it, it's what you want out of it. But don't just buy one part of this system and think that it's going to do what you need it to do. That's and and also don't if you're a, if you're a fluke fisherman and you. You mostly fish pro bucktails. A slow pitch rod probably isn't the rod for you. You know, you really have to be wanting to fish this jig to use one of these real limber rods. You know, if you if you use that with your spro bucktail, the rod's going to bend and the bucktail's never going to move. So, yep. yep. Many advantages to this slow pitch jigging. Many advantages, it sounds like. Anything else we can tell them? Did you know. have any phone-in calls, phone-in questions? Nothing today? Jeez, I didn't, uh, I didn't even look. Let's check before huh? we... What do we have? We have another question, Randy? Yeah. Can you fish a flat fall jig with wire leader? Sound like bluefish would catch the line while it's fluttering. Now, uh, with a per, wire, wire leader on the, on the jig? I'll he's worried about like getting bit off by a bluefish and losing a jig. I would never a, use a, jig. a wire leader for any kind of jigging, even with your standard diamond jig. It just, it just restricts the, the action the of the jig, no matter what it is. Even this diamond jig, which doesn't do much on its way down would still restrict this and they would not bite it as well. So what what we do is we well, double them, we, 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 we double, we double up the line, line up. Uh, gives a little more durability. Uh, if they do happen to nick one of the lines, sometimes you have a second line to save. But I don't think personally no, you would you would want to shy away from the steel leaders. We see a lot of it, uh, but you're only you're only hurting yourself as far as catching your fish. Uh, and the flat ball jig you really don't have an issue with the, the leader coming from the jig to the rod because this jig, when the fish gets hooked, this jig kind of falls out of the way. The, the issue you're going to have is with, are these made out of Kevlar? What type of material are these made out of? And are you keeping up with if they get frayed? So you're generally not going to lose a hook on one bluefish. You'll probably get three, four, maybe even a dozen bluefish because out of it's one. Because it's a different material. material. Okay. Right. All right. But, but eventually it's going to start to fray. And if you don't change out your hooks, then you're going to lose them. Okay. They do make wire versions of these. I don't yes. recommend them. Oh, someone just said that, and you're, yeah. saying, you're saying you don't recommend them. That was, they don't. Yeah. The whole thing with this is to get the action, and that wire doesn't give them the takes, action. Takes the action away. Yep. Okay. I hope that answers okay. a couple of the questions. Um, okay, I guess that's it. We are, folks, we are still... Uh, working with the millstone power plant with uh, the divers every day so we're not fishing uh i don't know we've got what do you think another another week 10 days week, yeah, I, I would probably say a week 10 days, days with them we might go we might go cod fishing before we get hauled out uh you know for the spring uh, uh spring's coming quick spring's coming quick and we gotta you know we gotta haul the boat out we gotta wax the hull and do the bottom and you know routine yearly maintenance so i don't know if we're gonna get to go cod fishing and I don't even know what's happening. We've kind of backed away from the codfish. I don't think it's that. Yeah, no. I, don't think it's I mean, I'm good. sure there's a couple to catch, but I don't think it's uh, red hot from what I've seen or heard of. We'll but see what happens. If we can get rid of this uh, contract with the divers, if we can 
wrap this thing up. Maybe we'll go on our own. Have a nice day. We'll but see uh, the next thing we'll be fishing for is probably the squid. Squid in April. Hopefully. So, hopefully. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's it, Kyle. Very good. You know, let me say one thing about J&B Tackle, because I was going to say this at the start. A lot of people don't realize, and, you know, we're, we're unscripted. This is a, yeah. we don't know what the hell we're going to talk about from minute to minute, you know. But uh, J&B Tackle, uh, I can remember when J&B Tackle was in the garage of Jack Doughton, your grandfather. Yep. And this was back in the early 70s, and they were making rods for me, and I'd break the rods and bring them back. They were, they were in the infancy of, uh, of learning how to build a rod. And uh, J&B Tackle got its name from Jack Downton and Butch, right. the partner, J&B. And that's how it all started, J&B Tackle. And from that, uh, your father, Carrie, my friend, took it over. And, uh, and uh, look at where you are uh, today, one of the premier... Uh, tackle stores in the state, if not in the Northeast, you know, but uh, you do a great job. So is this the rod we decided on? That, that's the one you decided on. <laughs> yeah, we're, How much is this gonna, one? We're going to oh, borrow. I just, you can take them all. We're going to borrow these two. I just put them on the account and send the bill to heaven. That is probably watching this, you know. Okay, <laughs> thanks, thanks, folks. Okay, stay healthy and take your kids fishing. Tomorrow I'm going ice fishing with my grandkids. Uh, so uh, do yourself a favor. If you don't have any kids, take a neighborhood fi uh, kid fishing. But... Uh, it's important, okay? Take somebody fishing. We'll see you next week, okay? Thank Thanks, you. Guys.